This is a critical analysis video that will be specifically dealing with a case study into the actions of a prominent communist furry known as Dio. She goes by Dio Taz Devil and Dio Vacus. Due to events that have unfolded, this is a significant case study. As a result, it will be a two-part set of videos. Master Zelox. Hmm. Read, understand, and hope you enjoy. In this first part, a brief introduction to Furry will be provided. Then, there will be the beginnings of the case study. Before getting into the crux of the videos, I'll provide a brief description of a cult of personality. And I'd like to ask you to keep this in mind through this and the next videos. Paraphrasing a few different dictionaries, a cult of personality is a situation in which a public figure is deliberately presented to the people as a great person who should be admired and loved. Usually a cult promoting the admiration of a living public figure to effectively extend their power and influence. This in turn means that the individual who is the personality as part of the cult will be beloved and trusted, regardless of information and evidence to the contrary. The first response to those who follow a cult of personality is to listen and believe. Moving on to furry. Specifically, a furry is someone who enjoys anthropomorphic characters of different mediums, such as comics, literature, artworks, adult works, and so forth, and who self-identifies as a furry. That is it. So what is the furry fandom? Furry originated in the 1980s, being a small sub-aspect of science fiction conventions and fandoms. The term furry fandom started to be used in the early 1980s, and then had become the standard name by the 1990s. As the furry fandom grew and became more separate and specialised, growing more since. There are many furries who have their entire lives, income, friendships, relationships, based in the furry fandom. Some even earn significant incomes from targeting this furry niche market. As part of this growth, changes also occurred. Furries started to become more and more insular, more and more separate from the science fiction and comics areas in which it initiated. Creation of furry-specific dating websites, art websites, porn websites, and all kinds of other things has been happening more. In fact, to be accurate, the description of furry fandom the fandom aspect of it died off a long time ago. At this point, it's just a legacy name. The furry fandom is actually a subculture. It isn't a fandom. If you look to what defines a subculture, it hits all of those boxes neatly and accurately. And, oftentimes, a subculture acts as something of a microcosm of the primary culture in which it resides. Furry has expanded significantly. There are close to about 100 different furry conventions across the world, bringing thousands upon thousands of furries together. Some of the more popular ones are even getting close to 9,000 attendees as of the end of 2017, and this continues to grow. Obviously, there have been many different conventions that have died for various reasons, not being popular enough, being poorly managed, even getting attacked for ideological reasons. This brings us across to Rocky Mountain Furcon, and the start of the case study subject for this video, Dio. Rocky Mountain Furcon was a moderately popular furry convention based in Denver, Colorado. It ran from 2007 to 2016, having an official attendance of 236 in 2007, growing to 1,677 in 2016. Then, after some significant controversy and a huge increase in security costs, it was forced to cancel the planned 2017 convention. This all started with a simple Twitter exchange, and escalated from there. 
This story is filled with lies and deceit, and through the deceit it was escalated. This start, the escalation, and the forced death of this convention is what got me interested enough to gather information and produce this case study. The start of it is simple enough. A prominent furry artist, Art Decade, decided to falsely call the furry raiders Nazis. Dio then responded with, can't wait to punch these Nazis. A somewhat empty threat, but a threat nevertheless. It is clear that in the context of the conversation, she is stating that she cannot wait to punch the furry raiders, due to the use of these Nazis in her comment, immediately following someone falsely accusing the furry raiders of being Nazis. Moving on, Olivia responds with, Watching you get shot by someone defending themselves from unprovoked assault will be far more entertaining. This is just a statement. That if Dio decides to assault someone, completely unprovoked, who is doing nothing wrong and is innocently standing there, then she should expect some level of self-defense against such an action. And Olivia would find it more entertaining to see Dio get hurt after initiating an assault against someone who was armed and willing to use it. Dreamer Hyena then states, Sure hope you're not suggesting that someone would bring a gun to the convention. Olivia, sure hope you're not planning on attacking innocent folks. I fully support a legal concealed carry. Dreamer, you may support concealed carry permits, but the convention does not at the event. Leave it at home. Now, things escalated from this point. Not for the fact that Dio threatened. Not for the fact that Dio threatened to assault an entire group and wanted to punch an entire group unprovoked for no apparent reason. No. Instead, the explosion comes from the gun threat that Dio apparently received, even though there isn't one. You can plainly see that no threat was issued against Dio. It was simply a matter of, well, if you are delusional and hateful enough to want to assault an innocent person who is doing nothing and actively initiate assault against them, then when you might get shot, watching you get hurt after you decide to assault someone unprovoked would be entertaining. Unfortunately, I don't have an archive of that initial Twitter conversation, however, Dogpatch Press has. He has written an article on it in which the conversation is referenced. Now, Nicole supports Dio and what she has done. As a result, I can take that as a reference that the tweet chain I showed is true and factual. Apparently, this threat that Dio issued was associated with the Ferry Raiders booking nearly 25% of the hotel rooms for the convention. Why did they do this? To offer discounts to their members for the rooms, and to also give away rooms for free to ferries who couldn't attend from out of state, otherwise due to total costs. Even ferries who were not a part of the Ferry Raiders. The leader and head of the Ferry Raiders has done this before. Dio started to make the matter more well-known, and this got two of the people on the board of directors of Rocky Mountain Furcon to make a very stupid snap decision. One of these folks happens to be a sovereign citizen, and if you know anything about sovereign citizens, then you would know that this isn't going to end well. Kahuki misused his position of authority and sent a flawed threat of legal action against her. This was probably the worst thing that they could have done. It seems like they may have caused Dio to realise that she could actually impact the convention, and spurred action on her part. As a result of this letter, Dio started to make false claims about the initial Twitter conversation using a badly cropped version in an attempt to change the context of the conversation as a whole. She started to claim that Olivia was a furry raider, when she wasn't, and that she was planning on bringing guns to the convention, which she wasn't, and that watching people get shot would be entertaining, which, 
if given the context of what Olivia said, would mean that Dio was definitely planning on assaulting people. That was the only context. That watching Dio get shot in self-defense would be entertaining. Moving on, one of Dio's followers suggests contacting the hotel itself, to which Dio states that it is an excellent idea, and that it could apparently save lives. These next couple are because I know the future of the situation. Calico responds to Dio with, Nothing he said was right, but punching Nazis or people who disagree isn't right either. To which Dio responds, I think it's morally right to punch Nazis. My great-grandfather did it, and they gave him medals. I'll do it for free. Okay. So again, in context. She is continuing the threat, stating it outright that this is what she wants to do. Then, when someone posts an archive link to her original threat, unfortunately lacking the context as Olivia was bullied off social media and deleted all of her posts, Dio responds with, why is this even archived? I didn't delete the tweet, unlike Olivia, with her gun, who deleted her account. I still can't wait to punch Nazis. <sighs> now, because I know what the future will bring, do you see how Dio has stated this outright multiple times to multiple people? Even people she doesn't know. She will claim from a few months from these posts onward that it was only ever a single joke, a response to one friend. The story will mutate over time and change significantly. One thing is clear of Dio, she enjoys the concept of revisionist history. The amount that Dio escalates the situation is just astounding and impressive. She claims that she has gotten an attorney, and that the police in two states are already involved. She again points out that she has gone to the police, and a police report is on file for this apparent gun threat, to which one of her followers directly contacts the hotel. Remember earlier when she was encouraging others to contact the hotel as well? Well, there might have been some reports from folks due to that too. Who knows? But we do know that Dio supported it openly to directly contact the hotel. And then Dio goes on to explain that the police is on it, along with the Colorado Bar Association and the Supreme Court. So far we know that Dio has advocated contacting the hotel directly, at least one of her followers having done so, that she has contacted the police of at least one state and knows that the police of two states are involved. She has an attorney, has contacted the Colorado Bar Association and the Supreme Court and Rocky Mountain Furcon security as well. Of When Dio escalates, she really escalates. I have to hand it to her, again. Given the context of the original comments that have spawned all of this, she must really, really want to initiate assault against people without the concern of getting shot in self-defense. Needless to say, Dio was successful. She got the convention shut down, Flayra, and several other sources even wrote stories on it. And it turns out that the Rocky Mountain Furcon was having trouble behind the scenes, mostly related to tax issues, but they were not overly concerned about it. Especially if the convention had gone ahead, those issues would have been resolved. Unfortunately, due to the attacks by Dio, the convention would have been forced to pay an additional US $22,000 in increased security costs. And due to the poorly managed situation that the convention found themselves in that year, they were unable to do so and had to close. Scorch, one of the members of the board of the Rocky Mountain Furcon, posted a public journal stating outright that it was the cause of Dio that the convention was shut down. The official statement by the chairman of Rocky Mountain Furcon hinted at this as well, but didn't state it outright. Dio even changed her Twitter name to Dio Concucker right after she managed to successfully kill Rocky Mountain Furcon. The about 1,700 or more furries who were going to attend the convention suddenly found themselves with no convention to attend. This this in turn skyrocketed the knowledge and recognition of Dio, the troll who managed to kill a furry convention. Needless to say, not all 1,700 folks were going to take the convention that they enjoyed and were looking forward to getting killed well. Even if only 10% of them misbehave, that is still 170 people. Heck, even if only 1% of them really held a grudge, that's 17. Now, just a little while later, Dio is claiming that she said 
punch Nazis as a joke to a friend. A furry raider threatened to shoot her at the convention. She reported the gun threat to Rocky Mountain Furcon security. As you can see, the story has changed from the reality of the situation to one in which Dio was a helpless victim, fighting against the horrible furry raiders who were threatening to shoot her, and that she only contacted the security of the convention. Not... well... Everything possible surrounding the convention and advocating her followers contact the hotel to save lives. But let's have a listen to what Dio has to say about why she did all of this. Echoplex Media managed to conduct an interview with Dio regarding Rocky Mountain Furcon and other issues. I had watched that and I definitely didn't approve. Regarding the furry raiders purchasing 25% of the room block. I had watched that and I definitely didn't approve. So Dio's justification for getting a convention shut down, she doesn't like a group and she doesn't approve of their actions. And that therefore justifies her actions. There are more examples of that through the interview if you want to listen for yourself. A very good example of Dio rewriting history from that interview is from 14 minutes to 16 minutes. Obviously having successfully led a campaign and utilised as many different resources as possible to spread a lie and get a convention shut down, Dio's going to have quite a few folks in that region disliking her and seeing her image as something akin to a kiss of death. So when she started getting interested in Biggest Little Furcon, being a convention that is relatively close to Colorado, obviously some of the furries going to that con, will probably be a little bit standoffish about Dio. She starts by wishing that she was attending, to which a joke is made in response. That joke then grows and becomes a Dio is watching you poster concept. Dio is on board with the idea, providing a high resolution copy of her most recognised avatar, which then quickly becomes a poster. And this poster is spread through BLFC, seemingly in an effort to make convention attendees who don't like Dio as uncomfortable as possible. Now, there are many furry raiders attending BLFC, being one of the cons that they enjoy, and these posters start with what seems to be the intended effect, making people uncomfortable. And Dio loves it. Laughing and loving life. Seemingly loving the discomfort she is causing by promoting this and encouraging her followers to put up these posters everywhere, reveling in the attention. Unfortunately for Dio, however, some fuzzy folk decide to have a bit of fun with it at her expense. Spinning Peanut, who was a furry raider and spending time with them at the convention, decided she wasn't going to be bullied by Dio and her followers. She took down one of these posters and put it on her face, making a few jokes at the expense of Dio. Obviously, Dio is filled with salt and cannot take a joke ever and needs to get her followers to retweet the fact that she is upset about it, and that apparently laser tag rifles can kill people, and that she needs to get BLFC to notice, getting incredibly offended at the joke and needing it to be stopped. The followers of Diodes attacked Spinning Peanut until they harassed her off Twitter and to shut down all of her social media accounts. Very reasonable reaction to a joke. As part of this, S. Snow Leopard got involved and pointed out that if she hadn't threatened to assault, then none of this would be happening. To which Dio responds, yet again, with the revisionist history, that it was only one joke to one friend. Needless to say, the followers of Dio were hurt by these jokes. They were happy to see the posters pop up and happy to make people uncomfortable. But if anyone makes Dio uncomfortable, that is a bad thing. Even Dio thought it was just a joke until she found out who made the joke. Then it became real, a legitimate threat. Instantly, somehow, Hydrolosaur X32 even took one home, then hold some guns at it. Dio obviously cannot take this joke either, and decides to single them out and state that it is all about that one joke she made. One joke that she has repeated several times in several ways to several people and was completely serious about. But Dio's views of fictional violence seem to change depending on who is making the joke and what it is. For example, one of Dio followers makes a violent piece of artwork, the start of a murder of someone. 
Baby Fur Fox responds, stating that this is proof that commies are violent people. Deer responds and states that by that logic, animators abuse animals, with a small clip from Tom and Jerry. I wonder if her logic could be consistent. Ever. Then that means those posters that her followers put up, being taken down and played with, isn't any kind of violence against her. With all of this insanity going on, and the way that Dio was seemingly trying to make as many people uncomfortable as possible at BLFC, an artist ended up being inspired. Draconis started a concept, hashtag Dio Twitter. In this, he took the expression that Dio's avatar and those posters at the convention had, and started making new avatars for furry folks with that expression. Dio didn't like this being the butt of a joke, and didn't like hashtag Dio Twitter at all. Due to the dislike though, it made it all the more popular. Dio started saying that Draconis was tracing, and then selling her artwork. Even though it would be in fair use, and the section of parody. Even then, a facial expression is not something that one can simply copyright. When it is put onto entirely new faces and drawings that are created new, that is transformative in nature, again falling under fair use. Dio continues, stating that Draconis shouldn't trace and sell her art, and that he was stealing art. Even going so far as to say that anyone involved in hashtag Dio Twitter were involving themselves in a harassment campaign against her, and that other people in that group have sent her death and rape threats. I have no idea how she can know who sent her threats. And that she knows definitively that these people who sent her threats are definitely part of this group, and also definitively a part of Dio Twitter, especially considering her predisposition of going to the police. If she had legitimate threats, and knew who sent them, then there would be police knocking. Not just these random statements, as if she knows who sent them and where they are involved. Needless to say, some folk thought that Dio, a communist, getting extremely frustrated at Dio Twitter, a legal fair use parody, and stating it that was theft of her intellectual property, was somewhat ironic. And then, to top it off, Dio herself drew a fair use parody of Draconis, again stating that he traced the artwork and sold it. Unfortunately for Dio, she has been lying this entire time. Draconis never sold any of the avatars he made. He was making them for the fun of it. He even went so far as to shut down his Patreon for his comic during the time of making these avatars, so that no one could claim in any way that he was doing it for money. When asked, and when talking about it, he would be upfront, and he would say that it was something that he couldn't profit off of, and that he was making sure he made no money from it. Dio, though, needs to continue the lie that he did, stating that transformative parody is clearly copyright infringement, and that he admitted he was tracing from her hour, and that he profited from it. A very blatant lie, given that he was actively trying to ensure that nobody could claim such a thing. Dio. Caught in another blatant lie. While we're on the subject of artworks, of other characters, and transformative and fair use concepts, what about what Dio was talking about with Echoplex Media? Of artworks of her killing her totally original character, Fox Hitler. Well, she has tweeted this gif several times. April 6 was the first time that I could find, but it may well have been t posted before that as well. If you look at it, it looks remarkably close to Foxler, the founder of the Furry Raiders, most likely designed this way for a reason. Posted again on April 12, and then, slightly after, Dio was apparently asked for the reference of Fox Hitler. Interesting. The design appears to be very similar to Foxler, but just with a white body in areas that will be covered by clothing. Dio updated it. It also has a yellow belly along with the yellow spine. And she describes the character as Fox Hitler, being completely different to Foxler. Very different, in her own words. You know what? Dio's original character, original art, and original concept has inspired me. I decided to make my own character, who is called 
Kami Taz Devil, and also goes by Kami Vicious, and by some twist of fate, he somehow resembles this communist furry Dio Taz Devil. My Kami Taz Devil has a yellow belly pretty different. I would strongly encourage everyone to do art of my original character, Kami Taz Devil, in all kinds of different situations. Now, I don't encourage or endorse violence. Therefore, it would be best to have artworks of Kami Taz Devil initiating the violence, and then those that he attacks defending themselves. Somewhat appropriately, there is a problem going on in the native Tasmanian devil population. There is this cancer, a facial cancer, that is spreading through fighting. It results in facial tumours, and then those tumours, they don't kill the Taz devil. Instead, they spread further and eventually prevent the animal from eating, which then leads to a death from starvation. If that isn't the best metaphor for communism, I'm not sure what is. As a result, Kami Taz Devil has this facial tumour condition, and can be drawn with different types of tumour. Now, Kami Taz Devil has been gorging himself on the great breast of capitalism for many years, growing quite fat. So as a result, he can be shown far fatter than the reference sheet. Moving away from my original character, Dio posting the gif a few more times, and asking others to tweet it out due to it hurting the feelings of people, due to being a parody of someone and killing them. Oh, sorry, no. It's due to how sensitive the quote, Nazis, end quote, are. Apparently, the Nazis were crying about the morals of stealing characters, Dio states, with no evidence to back it up. However, she does state that the Nazis stole her character and art first, before the animation was ever made, to make rape art to go with the rape-you-to-death threats. So far, yet again, with no evidence either the timing of it nor the quote, Nazi, end quote aspect. Interesting. Perhaps this can be looked into further. Alright, so there are three pieces, and each of these pieces appear to be made by the same person, and each piece has hashtag I'm with Dio and hashtag I'm in Dio. I wonder what the followers of Dio will think of this. Surely there will be enough information and evidence around to easily look things up and confirm what Dio is saying. Let's see. A call for exclusion with no understanding of context. Blaming all of a group for the actions of one, with no evidence to suggest that it comes from that group anyway. Active acceptance of the timeline that has been provided by Dio. Blind acceptance of the description provided by Dio, and, if we go by Dio's logic and way of interpreting things, a, a death threat against all of Alt Fairy. Again, blind acceptance of something that should be easy enough to look up. and. They are following Dio, so have seen the posts. Hopefully, they have a better memory than a few weeks. Let's have a look at the hashtag I'm with Dio. Oh, here we go. Dio posting how much they love the hashtag. That was April 10. Well, already that is far later than April 6, when the gif was first posted. Thankfully, I have an archive of the first of the three posts, and who posted it. All three were from this individual here. Unfortunately, I didn't archive all of them, because I didn't think that Dio would lie so blatantly about this. And here it is, April 26, 20 days after the first posting of the gift that I could find from Dio. Again, catching Dio in an outright lie and manipulation of her followers. Not only that, if you read the description posted by the artists themselves, it's not about the sex, it's about the humiliation, not rape, but sex. And one final thing. The big KK was only a part of Alt Furry for a short while. Not only that, he isn't a furry. So blaming the entire group for the actions of one individual who left the group. Great work, Dio. If anything, you are demonstrating that Alt Furry is actually kinda good. I wonder if we can quickly catch Dio in another lie. Easily and quickly is a fast example for everyone watching. Baby Fox Riley asked if they made a picture of Nazi furries killing commies, if that would be okay. Dia responded with skirting around the question and not answering at all. But she states that she doesn't get pictures of killing anyone, but that there was decapitation art, rape art, and helicopter murder art drawn of her character. 
I can't find the decapitation art, and I have looked. The rape art isn't rape, that's a lie. And the helicopter art shows a character with the likeness of a Tasmanian devil, along with a technicolor hyena and a horse with generic colouring, getting thrown out of a helicopter. It doesn't show the landing. You cannot claim that this is murder. Even then, are you sure that it's your character? It is just a generic Tasmanian devil after all. Or if Dio can claim that this is murder, then I can definitely claim that the gif of Dio punching Fox Hitler is murder, because it is looping. It just keeps punching over and over. Moving on, Dio has made art of someone killing Fox Hitler. So to answer your question, Riley, yes. If you make artwork of Nazis killing commies, that would be okay with Dio. She has made at least one artwork of a random friend killing Nazis. She would be hypocritical to only allow it one way. It seems to be extremely easy to catch Dio in a lie, because it happens so so often. How about we have a quick look at Dio's predisposition for filing false police and FBI reports? We already know from before that Dio likes to file false police reports, as was evident from the Rocky Mountain Furcon situation. But now, she posts this little thing. A leak from the Alt Fairy Discord, where the conversation progresses as Emperor Burb states she would find it funny to see a skinhead curb stomp Dio. She was told that no skinhead would waste their time or go to jail over something like that. And then she responds with, if you paid them, they would, but I have an idea, before the topic of conversation appears to end. Now again, as per the way Dio posts these kind of things, it's a very small section of conversation, with all context removed. We don't know if the conversation continued, stopped, or moved elsewhere. Considering the limited nature of this leak, and how Dio seems to take everything as a threat, even when it isn't one, I am unsure if I can trust this at all. Not having context changes things. Oh. And here we go. This is what Dio was talking about when she said that Alt Furry is getting investigated by the FBI. This out of context, small section of conversation. And you know, Emperor Burb left Alt Furry because Alt Furry was too freedom of speech oriented and not extreme enough for her. She left to become more extreme. Now, Dio escalates the lie. Instead of just, it was a conversation about possibly paying a skinhead to curb stomp me, it is now crowdfunding a hitman to kill her. Oh, and now, it isn't just a false FBI report, but a false police report as well. And this increase in the lie isn't enough for Dio. The next increase, now it is people threatening to kill her whole family, and active discussion over hiring a hitman to kill her. Continuing on the threats concept, Dio talking about the hundreds of death and rape threats, and apparently people calling her employer, and she knows the motivation. It is her historically revised only one joke to one friend a while ago. Though you will notice, she will just say that she has received threats. Never show them. Never show anything. Just play the victim and hope that her followers believe her. Well, given the past, they do trust Dio blindly. She even outright states in a joke that she is selfish by hoarding all of the threats and not sharing. Another, more recent example of Dio trying to make conventions uncomfortable for others comes from her sponsoring free Nazi furs bugger off temporary tattoos. Because as demonstrated numerous times now, her definition of Nazi is very fluid and can cover almost anyone she disagrees with. A more recent example of Dio's overuse of the term Nazi and how she twists words, here we have her outright stating that Nazis are gloating about avoiding the site rules. Let's follow this little rabbit hole. It comes from Dogpatch Press, the most questionable source of news in the furry subculture. Well, how about we look at the tweet that started all of this directly? The Fur Right Discord Twitter account. Look at that. He's outright stating that Alt Furry goes out of their way to follow the rules. That is the direct opposite of what Dio was claiming. That he is glad that Fur Affinity has put up anonymous moderation. That it's a positive step, because of the mod attacks that almost resulted in the suicide of a staff member. That is, the far-left furries not liking that they didn't get special treatment to spread hate 
abuse, and harass others. So they called a modern Nazi and bullied them until they were about to kill themselves and had to step down in their moderation capacity. Now, going through all of this, gathering these obvious and blatant examples of lies and manipulations, I even had to cut out several examples that were already written due to how long this was getting. This should be a good example of Dio and a good end of part one. Thank you all for taking your time to listen through this. End of the video. Please consider, comment, like, share, subscribe, support, and buy merchandise. Mm, then after considering, do it. Please do it. <laughs> At Sie Reich.